Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. With the rapid development of China's semiconductor industry, after the annual chip output reaches 324.19 billion in 2022, the situation of the global semiconductor industry has also begun to change. Due to the continuous strengthening of industrial agglomeration, complete infrastructure facilities, and strong talent pool, China is growing into a new center of the global semiconductor industry. This situation has also aroused concern in the United States. On the one hand, the semiconductor industry will bring a large number of high-paying jobs and job opportunities, which will strongly promote the transformation from manufacturing to technology industries, technologies such as the Internet of Things, cloud computing and metaverse play a positive role and influence and will have a siphon effect on the technology industry. When Japan announced the implementation of export controls in the field of 23 semiconductors, the Netherlands announced the implementation of export controls on immersion lithography machines, and the United States announced the implementation of export controls on high-performance chips. I am afraid that the counterattack came so quickly and so hard. China announced export controls on gallium and germanium. Shortly after the tripartite chip agreement came into effect, China's Ministry of Commerce and the General Administration of Customs issued an announcement on the evening of July 3 that they would impose export controls on gallium, germanium metals and their compounds. The consumption fields of gallium metal include semiconductors and optoelectronic materials, solar cells, alloys, medical equipment, magnetic materials, etc. Gallium metal plays an irreplaceable role in the fields of optical fiber communication, infrared optics, solar cells, and so on. 80% of the world's gallium and 60% of the world's germanium are produced in China. Even if other countries have corresponding reserves and mineral deposits, they do not have the corresponding smelting technology. Therefore, it can be said that this move is more than 7 inches. Gallium and germanium are widely used in the semiconductor industry. Among them, the hardest hit is undoubtedly Japan. According to the export data released in 2022, the countries with the largest exports of gallium in China are Japan, Germany, and the Netherlands in order. The countries with the largest exports of germanium are Japan, France, Germany, and the United States in order. It can be seen that whether it is gallium or germanium, Japan is the largest importer. After Japan imports gallium and germanium, it will be processed into high-end semiconductor materials to obtain more lucrative profits. For example, the second-generation semiconductor materials represent gallium arsenide, which is widely used in optical communications, satellite communications, radar, microwaves, base stations and mobile phone radio frequency devices and other equipment. The third-generation semiconductor material gallium nitride is widely used in 5G communications, new energy vehicles, radio frequency communication devices, high-frequency power devices, LEDs and other fields. Export controls have also caused the prices of gallium and germanium to rise rapidly. On July 3, gallium with a purity of 99.99% was valued at 1,775 yuan, 245 US dollars, per kilogram, a 5.97% increase from the previous trading day, which was on May 16th. 
highest level ever. Germanium ingot prices stood at 9,150 yuan, $1,264, per kilogram on July 3rd. The rise in raw materials will also be passed on to downstream industries, with Japan bearing the brunt. As we all know, the Japanese semiconductor industry has lost its complete industrial chain after being hit by a series of blows such as the US-Japan Semiconductor Agreement and can only produce some parts and components. In addition, Japan's own land and natural resources are very limited, so it is very dependent on various metal resources in China. Therefore, after the export control of gallium and germanium was announced, Japan became the first country to jump out against it. Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Hiroichi Motsuno stated at a related press conference, if China has any unfair measures against Japan in accordance with international rules such as the World Trade Organization, the WTO, China will take corresponding actions. At this time, I also understand why China chose to fight back after the dust settled on the tripartite chip agreement between the United States, Japan and the Netherlands. Japan announced the 23 items of export control first, and China announced the export control of gallium and germanium later, and morally, China has taken the lead. If you don't sell me semiconductor equipment and raw materials, then I won't sell semiconductor metal materials. This is also a reciprocal strategy. Of course, gallium and germanium are actually just the first step in the counterattack. China also has the trump card of rare earths, including lanthanum, LA, cerium, CE, praseodymium, PR, neodymium, ND, promethium, PM, samarium, SM, europium, EU, gadolinium, GD, terbium, TB, dysprosium, DY, holmium, HO, erbium, ER, thulium, TM, iterbium, YB, lutetium, LU, SC, and yttrium, Y. A total of 17 kinds of rare metal elements. A lack of these metals would shut down the global semiconductor industry. So can other countries replace it? The answer is negative. In the past few decades, China has been firmly in control of the export of the rare earth industry. Compared with the price of chips, the price given by China is very favorable. This method has also defeated rare earth companies in other countries. Now only China has the ability to complete the smelting and extraction of rare earths. Now the problem lies in front of the three countries that make up the tripartite chip agreement, the United States, Japan and the Netherlands. Either the restrictions on China's semiconductor industry are lifted, or no one can produce chips at all. Because there is no semiconductor industry chain in which China participates, there is naturally no need for China to continue to maintain it.